Hi everyone, Trevor here. I'm going to go over setting up your own VoIP solution using uh, some software called 3CX. Now you can have an on-prem version or a cloud-based version. Both work extremely well and we're going to go over how to go through and get this set up. So there are going to be a couple things that we're going to need. We're going to need to set up a 3CX account. And I set up something called a call centric account. And you're going to need to buy what's called a DID, which is essentially a phone number. And we're going to use dirt cheap to do that. So let's look at 3CX first. This is the user interface. Um, I've already signed up. I have my account. You can see that I have a standard account. Uh, I am self-managed and they have a hosted option as well. So let's have a look at the downloads. So there are several different versions of Windows software. There's Linux and Raspbian. So for 3CX, the system that is the call system, we have a Windows Analytics version. Client apps, we have a desktop app and a legacy app. SBC is the border gateway if you are using the cloud system. So there's the Raspbian, Linux, and Windows version. We have an Outlook plugin and we have a template generator. So I'm going to be focusing on the on-prem Linux version for the 3CX server. And that really does take care of the 3CX account for what's available. So let's have a look at call centric. So call centric is basically where you buy your phone number, which is called a did. I purchased mine using dirt cheap. You can see that here in the middle of the products. And I have a call in and out North America basic, which gives you 120 minutes for $1.95 US a month and the dirt cheap did is $2.95 US dollars a month. And this is where we will also end up getting our SIP information and did for our on-prem 3CX server that we're going to get set up. Okay, so I have a pre-configured virtual machine here. I'm going to launch 3CX, hit enter, and now we're going to get it loaded. Uh, just for the record, I have this machine set up with two processors and dynamic RAM going between 4 and 8 gigabytes of RAM. And it is connected to uh, my virtual NIC which can go out. So here we are, we're gonna put our host name in for the machine. And then we're gonna add our domain. English, I'm in Canada, so I'm gonna select Canada. going to just select American English for the keyboard, set a root password, verify, set my time zone, and it's going to install. We're going to use a uh, guided entire disk. All files, one partition, and we're going to commit. Now this will just take a few minutes.
Okay, so we've gone through most of the install. Now we have an option here. I want to select 3CX system because I want the full on-prem system. And the other version, as I said before, is the border gateway system for connecting to the cloud. Okay, so we're through most of the install. We have to select our license agreement. It's going to activate and reboot. And then we're going to select our Debian distro for booting. And I want to run the configuration from the web browser and then it gives me the IP address for that and then we'll go to the browser and get that set up. Okay with the system installed we've opened up the browser to the IP listed below and we're going to create our install of uh, 3CX. So we have our license key from when we set up our account it's going to ask us to create a username and a password. So we're going to go admin, put in our password. Well, put in a proper password. Then we're going to go next. We're going to go with the public IP address. Uh, we have a dynamic IP address. And these are the ports that we need to keep in mind for, for when we're setting up 3CX. We have a SIP port, a tunnel port, HTTP and HTTPS port. Select our default adapter. If we have our own DNS server, which is our firewall, so we'll just have it use the local IP. Here it is getting all set up, and this will just take a few minutes. Okay, now it's asking us for what kind of extension length we want, two, three, four, five digits. So just because for this demo, I'm going to select two digits, hit next, select the country, select my time zone. There's Edmonton. Oh, there's Mountain Time, Edmonton and Calgary. Okay, my extension number would be 10. I'll fill this out with my information email address and my voicemail number. Now that I filled out my information, countries I want to be able to make calls to and receive calls from. So I'm just selecting North America, English prompts, and here it is creating the PBX. Okay, so the information here, here's the summary, and you're wanna to gonna to save it somewhere, notepad, take a screenshot, something. It's kinda of important for us to get into the system. So hang on to that. Okay, so with that done, let's go and configure our system. So we put in our port 5001 and we will need the extension number or the username and the password to log in. And that was from the one we just generated. So this is the user interface for 3CX. So this is the dashboard. You can see we have our system status. Uh, PPX status and other general information. We also have links to trunks, phones, audit log events, 
activity log updates along with a menu of a large amount of options on the left hand side. Okay, so to provision a VoIP phone, you can see here I have a Polycom VX411. The first thing we need to do is set up a SIP trunk. So we're in our SIP trunk section. Uh, you can see here we have our main trunk number. So in here, under authentication, you're going to want to put in the authentication ID, which you can find in your call centric account under extensions. Select your extension by selecting modify. And here you have your SIP username and the password that you can copy out. So then once you do that, you can put in the authentication ID and the authentication password. You can then add your DID there, which would be the dirt cheap phone number that we have. And here you can set up uh, other different caller ID options, inbound outbound parameters. There are additional parameters in the phone here. You can see the first name I have here, I have myself and my wife with my email address associated it, with it. I added the did that we added here in the SIP trunk and in uh, for additional features you need to log in to the phone such as for the automatic dial. That pretty much concludes our setup for now. We're going to go over this in detail, uh, adding a did to a user, uh, setting up inbound rules, outbound rules, uh, backup and restoring, uh, security, we'll briefly touch over that. Uh, faxing, hot desking, and then other integrations that you can go over. If you found this tutorial useful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Questions, comments, leave in the comment section. I do try to get back to them as soon as I can. Anyway, I hope you found this useful. Have a great one.